Hey, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. My name is Jeffrey Samaganda, and I'm the founder of the Action Wealth Academy, the Action Wealth System, and the Action Wealth series of guidebooks and training programs that work with individuals and companies really everywhere. We help them to become more competitive in their chosen field, as in the local market as well as the international market, because we believe the world is becoming much more competitive than it was before. But also we take this step, them a step further by looking at what they have and create what I describe as multiple streams of income. Because today you can't afford to put all your eggs in one basket, meaning we rely on one income, whether you're a corporation or an individual. So you need to create multiple uh, streams of income. But also we don't leave them there, we th take them a step further and show them how to make that wealth they're generating work for them. Because if you don't put your wealth to work, if you don't put your money to work, it's impossible to achieve the financial security that you're looking for. But also if you don't protect it, don't worry to be taken away from you. Now that's what we do. However, um, every week I record at least one video and the short video and the reason I do that because I get questions from my friends my students um, in the seminars or talks that I do or the seminars that I go to as people that I just meet every now and then and this week is not different but the question for this week is actually came from somebody actually I met um, we met and uh, I know this person I don't know him very well but uh, we met in London uh, a few times but I bumped into him on the street and took me aside for a coffee and he told me what he, the challenges we, he was going through um, and I'm happy to share because I won't mention his name so you won't know exactly who the person I'm talking to, I'm talking about. But he basically had been in business with his partner for about five years. They have this uh, very simple general arrangement of a partnership that most people seem to do nowadays, or they always did. Um, but his partner has been sued right now. And, uh, and the lawsuit basically uh, seemed to be affecting their business and it could actually force them out of business. Because what the judge was asking, this the other person has to declare his assets, and the one major asset this man has to, his partner, he needed to declare is obviously their business. For five years they've been working, but they did not put systems in place to protect themselves, protect them against lawsuits, protect themselves uh, in case one partner get into trouble. Now my friend can end up actually losing everything purely because they didn't do the right thing at the beginning. Now. <clears throat> I did give him some advice. I did um, refer him to some of my best attorneys and advisors can basically help him. Uh, they might be able to, they might not be able to, but either way, I thought there was another opportunity to share some of these ideas with you because maybe you're going through the same thing or maybe you haven't thought about putting some systems in place and you're into the same situation either personally or business-wise and you have not thought about the idea of protecting yourself against um, uh, 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 lawsuits or against uh, in the, ta the tax man because that's another thing that's going to take more of your money the tax man or lawsuits and, and lawsuits can come from all types of people they can come from your family friends family and friends I know uh, somebody's going through some really incredible um, lawsuits with his ex-girlfriend of one child and they're really having some major issues and, and it's not just claiming money for child support this is just proper um, you know, legal issue because they, this person did find out this man actually got some money. There are lawyers here in London, their job to help women get money out of their husbands or helping husbands get money out of their women. You know, lawyers are there nowadays to find work and they find work by giving you advice how to get more money out of whoever, whether get money out of the government or get, get, get money out of the company you work for. That's where you see these adverts everywhere. And have you ever, you know, uh, had an accident before? Have you ever been uh, discriminated before? Have you ever been, uh, you know, done anything that you think we can actually get money out of that particular company or that particular person? It's, it's what goes on all over the world. So you need to be aware of it and protect it. Now you might say right now, come on, Jeff, I've never been sued before. Well, if you have never been sued before, because remember, they don't sue poor people. Okay, they don't sue people who have nothing, but the day you have something of a value, I guarantee you they'll come after it. Now, when I was talking to my friend, I really felt for him because, um, you know, I remember when I was like 17 years old, I set up this financial uh, services business. Obviously, I was too young to be uh, owning the company. So I got a friend, a person that I knew was a bit older to really to front the business. And this person was an, an accountant, so I assumed this person knew what, it, what he was doing. 
And in the end, we actually got sued. We lost everything. I had to start from scratch. But again, I didn't learn the lesson. I was about maybe 23. We, I, we got sued again. But before that, I got involved in a couple of partnerships. Again, with no structure, no agreements, nothing. In the end, I ended up walking out of those two partnerships. And one partnership, even when I left, they were still actually chasing me for the mistakes the other partner was still doing because I didn't put things in place to protect myself. But did I stop there? No, I'm moving to another business, which basically set up with a friend, but we didn't exactly do the right thing. We registered the company name that we thought it was a cool name. We got ourselves a domain name because, you know, the domain was available, the company was available from the company's house here in the UK. Registered the company, started doing business. Slowly tickling, we, 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 we growing a business slowly, and one day, you know, the guy came knocking on the door, and they gave us these huge papers to sign for, um, you know, recorded delivery, and we signed for it. I opened it. And in there, there's a huge lawsuit from this, you know, huge financial institution company suing us for use of the name. Apparently, the name was... Uh, uh, was infringing on their on their name and and uh, for whatever reason apparently we were benefiting from using the name which kind of familiar with theirs and this company was suing us for millions millions we were a company not even tiny over a million but we were sued for for really for millions and and i was like wow you know first of all i was i was excited because yeah we got sued for a million i've never been sued for a million before that was like yeah awesome we've been sued for a million great but we had to really drop the company and go back and start from scratch. But from that particular lesson, I decided from there on, I'll never make that mistake again. I have to make sure I put some systems in place. I check things before I do. Just the fact the name was available, it didn't mean that we can actually just use it. Just because the domain was available, it didn't mean that we just go and use it. We needed some kind of a, a different kind of copyright advice. We needed to look at people who understands, you know, copyright laws and, and really be able to check this stuff. Because we wanted to, we wanted to be a global uh, business. We wanted to be uh, a company that's going to be doing business all over the world. And as soon as other companies or other lawyers see that they can make some money for their client, well, they come after you. And in the end, that was another lesson. But before that, I used to get involved in partnership with people. And I usually make comments like, oh, I believe this thing is going to work. If it doesn't work, I'll pay you back the money. And so stupid, I used to make those kind of commitments or, or promises that, because I know it's going to work. When you're young and excited about your idea, you believe it never go wrong. It can only go right. And even if it doesn't go right, you know, you know you're going to make millions. You know, you know what's 100000 for? You, know, you can always pay back to this particular person who basically trusting you to invest in you right now because you have no one else who's agreeing to invest with you. So this is the only person and you promise anything. Well, my friend, I'm asking you to be careful. You need first to make a decision that you're building a business supposed to be here well after you're not here anymore. So as part of your business plan structure, in there there has to be some method of protection. If you ever go to get money from any, any decent investor, they want to check everything from your company names, your, uh, your copyrights, um, ownership on your products or your, on, 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 on your business names, on your domain names. They want to know your partners, you know, who owns what, you know, what their situations, you know, how can you get them out? Something goes wrong. How do you protect yourself? If your partner is in trouble, you have to protect yourself. If your partner dies, or if you have this particular issue, because you don't want to end up having your partner's family become your partner straight away when your partner is not there anymore, purely because they're now your partners. Now you're going to deal with 10 people. You don't know, even know all these kids who come in and demand certain things that you don't know about. You've got to learn to protect yourself. Now, I believe getting good advice is key, but I need to be very careful here. I'm not here to advise you because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a qualified financial advisor. I'm not a qualified um, uh, tax advisor. I'm not a qualified lawyer. So I'm not here to give you advice, but I'm here to tell you my experiences, and I'm here to give you a few tips you need to go with to start putting yourself in the right order. Step one. You need to make a decision that you're building a business going to be here forever. So you're going to invest in knowledge about protecting your business. 
Now, what does that mean? Really, the reason why in our action well system we have that training program as part of our training program is because we believe it's so important to understand it's not how much money you're going to make, it's how much money you're going to keep. And remember, like I said, if, you beca- if you've never been sued before because the marketplace did not perceive you have anything of a value, the day you have it, they'll come after it. So make a decision to equip yourself with some basic knowledge, understanding what is protection. Because you see, if you don't learn and equip yourself with knowledge, you won't be able to do the step two, which I'm going to share with, share with you in a second. You won't be able to go and find the people or to recruit the right people or to hire the right people, the right attorneys, the right tax lawyer, tax experts, the, the right accountants, the, world, the right copyright lawyers, the people who will be able to protect you in order for you to make sure you keep your money because it's better for you to choose what to do with your money than someone else make that decision for you. So when you don't have a clue about everything, anybody you meet, you believe they're the best at what they do because you don't know anything. So make a decision, take a seminar, take a course, read a book on that particular subject. Once you have the basics, at least you understand the fundamentals, then go on and and do step two. Step two, look for the qualified people and interview them. Find a tax expert and interview them because you know something about that. Interview them, what can they do for you? Good lawyers, what can they do for you? What's their value? Good accountant, what can they do for you? Don't confuse, not every single accountant understand tax, tax laws. Not every single accountant can advise you about business matters. They're just there to do your book sometimes. But there's some accountant actually are business people. They'd be able to advise you the best way to go about certain things. And usually good firms, they have all these people within their partnership. They have a tax expert. They have a, um, uh, a protection expert. They have uh, a corporate lawyer expert. They have a litigation. They have criminal. They have all these things that you know can actually help you to protect you. But not only protect you as a business, but protect you as a person. Because your personal protection is also required. Because sometimes anything can happen to us. And you have families you're going to leave behind. We're not be able to protect them in terms of insurance protection. So you need to find a strategy to protect yourself through insurance. Also protect yourself through corporations to protect your assets as a business. Purely because that's another, almost another type of insurance. Because it's all about protecting yourself. The other knowledge you need to acquire is taxes. The tax money is going to take a lot of your money. If you don't understand and how to find good advice for people to help you to understand what should you pay? Because I believe as an entrepreneur, you should never pay a penny more to what you de- what the tax laws allows you to pay. Take advantage of that because that's what the rich are rich. They only pay what they're supposed to pay, not a penny more. And if you pay a penny more, they will claim it back. Because the tax rules are written to help you as an entrepreneur to get out there, use the money wisely to create jobs so people can pay more taxes. So the incentives are created for the entrepreneurs because there's one out of a thousand. So they want you to go and keep more of your money. They want you to go and use that money to invest back in your business, to create more jobs and create and solve problems. And that's how the world and the economy of any country can grow. That's why the world can become a better place. And they want you to keep more of that money. But if you don't get good, smart people to help you, to advise you to go go about it the right way, you will lose. And a third area, start to put those things in place, but not spending too much money. You see, I have the strategy that I use. I always have the best lawyers, the best accountant, the, tax, the best tax advisors. Those are the ones I go to when I have a big deal, when I have some key moments when I need the, the top level advice. Okay, but also I need to be aware, I'm not a big company to afford to pay, go to those people every single day. So I only go to them when I need the top advice. But also the, the people I use when I'm on my letterheads, on my business cards, on, on my proposals. Because I want you to understand that if you're going to do business with me, I work with the best. So if you're going to try to sue me, you know you better buckle. You better really be serious. You better really be uh, honest to yourself that can you take me on because my lawyers, by just researching on them, they'll actually scare you to say, you know what? I can't go to this guy, this guy if I'm not really prepared to fight through because these lawyers will go after you and they'll make you money. They make me money. 
um, you know, so I don't mind you suing me because that will basically help me make money out of you. You know, the person who sues first is the one who lost. Those are the facts. So be careful, get the top lawyers. By you going and work with them and the invoice you want, now you're entitled to say they're your lawyers. You don't have to go to them every single day. Have some other local lawyer who can go to every now and then for small stuff. But for the big stuff, have that guy be part of your strategy, be part of your business plan, be part of advising you these, the, the strategic advice that you need to make sure you can protect yourself, your family and your business. But remember, if you didn't understand anything about all that stuff, you won't be able to know the good one and the bad one. You just take what everybody basically says. And that's a mistake I see people have. I have an accountant. Well, how much that accountant is saving you in taxes? How much advice that this accountant helping you, your company grow? Is the accountant evaluating your business every six months to help you and tell you what you need to do to improve the value of your business? Because they're not doing that. They're not good at tax advisors. So you need to find the good ones. Now, <laughs> don't make a mistake of thinking that things are just going to be okay. Learn. Hire the best. Don't pay what you can't afford. But make sure you have the experts as well, the local people to work with you to help you go further with your business. If you put those strategies in place, I can guarantee you, you'll be able to look and sound much more professional to your clients, especially for those who really want to really go to bid and work with bigger companies who really want to work with the people they know that they also have the, the thinking uh, in place to be able to compete and work with them with the level of understanding because that's what happens. There's no way trying to go to work with a large corporation when they actually, as far as they're concerned, you look small. Sometimes you just need to punch above your weight. Look big even though you're small. Technology today allow, allows us today that a 14-year-old in their bedroom can actually set up a corporation to compete with large corporations today if they knew how. You need to take advantage of that. I'll leave you with this. Do not work so that all your stuff get taken away. Learn to protect your assets. Learn to protect your family. Avoid going around bragging that you own this, you own that, you own this, because rich people don't do that. They don't own anything. They have the use of that stuff, but they don't own them in their personal names. That's why you, you know, right now the middle class people just need to go and check on and the voter registry and who owns this particular house and you know who these people are and you can easily just go knock on their doors but rich people you can't find them their stuff is protected through structures and corporations that you can't even touch them even if you wanted to sue them learn from the rich do what the rich do if you want to go and use that wealth to go and make a difference in the world i believe that it should be you to decide what to do with the money not someone else I hope that helps. But if you have a specific question you want to ask me about this particular subject, you can go and pick up my book, Financial, uh, The Actual System. It's on Amazon. I actually have all these structures and ideas and strategies in the book. Or you can just email me and inbox me if you have a specific question regarding, regarding this particular issue of protection. Until next time, you take care. God bless. Bye for now.